again, my name is Gabe Zona. This is the 4th of February, 2019. I posted a video recently and I talked about the assassination of Martin Luther King and I said it was done by our government under the orders of the FBI Director James Edgar Hoover. Article posted on March the 30th, 2018. Who killed Martin Luther King Jr.? His family believes James Earl Ray was framed. In the five decades since Martin Luther King Jr. was shot dead by an assassin at age 39, his children have worked tirelessly to preserve his legacy, sometimes with sharply different views as how best to do that. But they are unanimous on one key point. James O'Reilly did not kill Martin Luther King. For the King family and others in the civil rights movement, the FBI's obsession with King in the years leading up to his slaying in Memphis on April 4, 1968, pervasive surveillance, a malicious disinformation campaign, and open denunciations by FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover laid the groundwork for their belief that he was the target of a plot. Hmm. Quote, it pains my heart, said Bernice King, 55, the youngest of Martin Luther King's four children, and the executive director of the King Center in Atlanta, that James O'Reilly had spent his life in prison, paying for things he didn't do. Until her own death in 2006, Coretta Scott King, who endured the FBI's campaign to discredit her husband, was open in her belief that a conspiracy led to the assassination. The family filed a civil lawsuit in 1999 to force more information to the public eye. And a Memphis jury ruled that the local, state, and federal government were liable for King's death. The full transcript of this trial remains posted on the King Center website. There's a link there for you. This is abundant evidence, Coretta King said after the verdict, of a major high-level conspiracy in the assassination of my husband. The jury found the Mafia and various government agencies were deeply involved in the assassination. Mr. Ray was set up to take the blame. But nothing changed afterwards. No vast sums of money were awarded. The King sought only $100, and Ray was not exonerated. King's two other surviving children, Dexter, 57, and Martin, the third, 60, fully agree that Ray was innocent and their view of the case is shared by other respected black leaders. I think there was a major conspiracy to remove Dr. King from the American scene, said a representative John Lewis, a 78-year-old civil rights icon. I don't know what happened, but the truth of what happened to Dr. King should be made available for history's sake. Yeah, so should the assassination of JFK, both senior and junior. Andrew Young, the former UN ambassador and Atlanta mayor who was at the Lorraine Motel with King when he was shot, agrees. I would not accept the fact that James O'Reilly pulled the trigger, and that's all that matters, said Young, who noted that King's death came after the killing of John F. Kennedy and Malcolm X and just months before the slaying of Robert F. Kennedy. We were living in the period of assassinations, Young said. I wonder what code name they gave that operation. Conspiracies have long gripped the American imagination from JFK's assassination in 63 to Deputy White House Counsel Vince Foster's suicide in 1993 to Democratic National Committee staffer Seth Rich's slaying in 2018. Dave Garrow, a Pulitzer Prize winning biographer of King, said, that the King children are part of a larger population of American people who need to believe that the assassination of King or Kennedy must be the work of mightier forces rather than victims of small fry, lifetime losers. People need to see something of a balance between effect and cause, Garo said, that if something has a huge evil effect, it should be the result of a huge evil cause. Even those who believe that Ray, who died in prison in 1998, killed King, tend to think that he received assistance from someone, whether it was his two brothers, or the FBI, or the Mafia. Because Ray suddenly pleaded guilty in 1969, less than a year after the shooting, there was no trial. The largest government investigation led by the House Select Committee of Assassinations 
under Chief Counsel Robert Blakely theorized in 1979 that Ray committed the killing in the hope of collecting a $50,000 bounty offered by supporters of then presidential campaign George Wallace in St. Louis, where Ray's brother lived. But there was no definitive evidence to prove the theory, and the Wallace supporters were dead by 1979. Blakely said recently he had tried to prove a conspiracy but could not. If the FBI or CIA was involved, they had destroyed the documentation of it by 1979, he said. I have no stake in the outcome, Blakely said. You come up with a better outcome with evidence to support it, I'll support your theory. He remains adamant that Ray was the gunman, but Blakely had help that should have been investigated in 1969 and was not. John Campbell, who has investigated the case for years in Shelby County, Tennessee, District Attorney's Office, said Ray's version of events kept changing. His office issued a report in 1999 saying Ray was responsible. I'm not saying he didn't have help, Campbell said, but he didn't have the FBI or the Memphis police or the mafia. Hmm. Well, you can sort of think what you like. You can read the rest of the article. I'm absolutely convinced that it was a hit. The FBI director, Edgar Hoover, couldn't handle the fact that King was going to get the Nobel Peace Prize. That pushed him over the edge. Folks, wake up. Smell the coffee. You might want to repost this in your social media accounts. You might want to pass it along to like-minded friends. There is no doubt in my mind that King was assassinated by our government, as was JFK, as was JFK Jr. Why do you think Trump wouldn't release the information? Because some of those perpetrators are still alive, aren't they? Thanks for listening. The link will be attached.